Today's uh, the fifth Sunday of Lent, and we're going to meditate today on the question, Who am I? Who am I? And Claudia's meditation is a beautiful guideway into this, this particular reflection. The fifth Sunday in Lent in the uh, traditional liturgical calendar is called Passion Sunday. And Passion Sunday marks the events leading up to the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus on Easter. The word passion here comes from the Latin word meaning to be suffered or to be endured. In metaphysical Christianity, this time of passion symbolizes the struggle that all of us endure as we work to change our thinking about who we really are. Formally stated, as we all know, we are working to realize spirit, to make the divine of us real, concrete, and practical in our daily lives. And we know intellectually that we have always been, from the moment of conception, and maybe even before, individualized versions of the allness that is God. We affirmed this just a few minutes ago when we declared that there is only one presence, one power, one love active in our lives and in the universe. God the good, omnipotent. We know and proclaim this as a positive mental conception, but do we feel it in the marrow of our bones? Is our awareness that we are, as Eric Butterworth puts it, the eachness of the allness of God, does that res awareness resonate in our entire being, body, mind, and soul, every minute of every day? Does our identity as the Christ reign supreme and serenely in our consciousness, even when times are difficult, and especially in the face of death? Jesus himself, throughout this time of his life, displayed for all of us to see the way to overcome error consciousness, which is the conviction that we are inevitably separate from God, in order to allow the divine of us to become who we feel ourselves to be. For me, the raw display of his humanity as he faces betrayal, torture, and death is the most dramatic teaching of his whole mission. It is during these days that he manifests the triumph of divine life over death and desolation. In all that he said and did, he was truly our way shower. He showed us exactly the way how we can also triumph over our thinking that lack, limitation, and loneliness must surely prevail. So today as we meditate on this way that Jesus showed us to transcendence of and triumph over our erroneous thinking, let us concentrate on rediscovering who we are. Now most often in New Thought when someone asks us who we are, we answer, I'm a child of God. In fact, this insight was what led to the founding of Unity. It came to our co-founder, Myrtle Fillmore, as she was dealing with the difficulties that her tuberculosis was bringing to her role as a young wife and mother. Most of us know the story. She had a flash of insight. She heard a still small voice that said, I am a child of God. I inherit no disease. And from that little seed, the realization that children of God inherit nothing harmful, nothing small, limited, or sad, helped her see immediately that the challenge was to change her thinking that she was alone, separate, adrift on a sea of powerlessness. And with grit and determination, she did just that. She began to praise the health of her body and every cell in it. She developed the discipline of noticing every old thought that came up that assumed the validity of sickness, weakness, and pain. And with directness and zeal, she denied them. She denied her thoughts of illness and turned them into thoughts of health, vitality, creativity. And within little over a year, her tuberculosis disappeared. And the healthy body that she'd begun affirming in the pain and difficulties of the disease became the reality that she was living. She was freed up to undertake what eventually became the unity work, 
sharing with others the spiritual insights and practice that changed her life forever. In her way, she was going through the same passion experience that Jesus did in his way, the journey we mark in this Lenten season. She faced debilitation and suffering, a disease that would inevitably shorten her life. She had a conversion experience that changed her identity, and she then struggled to apply her new awareness to releasing her old thinking so that she could transcend into and put on a new realization. Through prayer and focus, she overcame her beliefs and limits and disease and resurrected into thoughts of divine and limitless potential. So I want to draw our attention to the very first element of her passion experience. She changed her identity. She proclaimed she was a child of God. That shift became the foundation upon which all of her subsequent work rested. She made the commitment to see herself only as a divine being, no longer a mere mortal, helplessly tossed around by the conditions of life. When she affirmed her true inheritance as a child of God, she was claiming freedom from all the products of her false beliefs about herself and the world. In one of her letters, she writes about this process of emancipation, saying this, the light of God revealed to us, the thought came to me first, that life was of God, that we were inseparably one with the source, and that we inherited from the divine and perfect Father. What that revelation did to me at first was not apparent to the senses, that is to her error consciousness, but it held my mind up above negation, and I began to, cl I began to claim my birthright and to act as though I believed myself the child of God, filled with his life, and so I gained. Now, when Myrtle Fillmore identified herself as a being of God, and only of God, she grasped that she was, as she says, inseparably one with the source. And as one with the source, she had access to the exact same powers of mind that Jesus accessed, on his own journey to knowing himself as the Son of God. And whenever any of us finally lets go of our belief in the limitations of being human by accepting the infinite security and well-being of being divine, we feel the thrill of blessed assurance of a fearless life dedicated solely to discovering the wonder of our own being. In her chapter on affirmations and lessons and truth, Emily Cady offers us four fundamental affirmations that we can use in our spiritual practice, two of which focus on our divine identity. And the second of these directly addresses our oneness with source. And if you'll bear with me, I want to put this up on the screen so that we can share this together. For those of you on the phone, I will read this out loud. I am a child or manifestation of God. And every moment, his life, love, wisdom, power flow into and through me. I am one with God and I'm governed by his law. And so to begin to answer the question, who am I? Let us repeat this affirmation together. I am a child or manifestation of God. And every moment, his life, love, wisdom, power, flow into and through me. I am one with God and am governed by his law. Now notice how your body responds to this declaration. How do you feel? Do you feel a sense of joy or a sense of peace? Do you feel some resistance? like a lurch in the guts? What did you hear, or I'm sorry, what did you hear the little voice in your head say when you said, I'm a child or manifestation of God? Well, no matter what you felt or heard, as a child of God, you can be assured that they are simply the way that the life, love, wisdom, and power of God were flowing through you in that moment. 
even when my old thinking resists the truth of my being, even then, as we just said in the affirmation, in every moment of our lives, God's love, wisdom, power are flowing into and through us. So there's a wonderful old Christian hymn that captures the emotional resonance we feel when we let go and let God take over our identity. It's called Blessed Assurance. So shout out to you, Esther. Blessed Assurance. And I'd like us to listen to it now. Gordon will put the words up on the screen if you'd like to sing along as it's not in our Wings of Song. Now, I warn you, the words might seem a little old-timey to some of us at first, but you just do a quick metaphysical translation in your own head and let the spirit of the song remind you of who you really are. Well, another way to say, this is my story, this is my song, is this story, this song are the way I express who I am. When I own this story, when I own this song of being a child or manifestation of God, I feel in the depths of my soul the blessed assurance of health, prosperity, wisdom, joy. And so as we deepen our meditation on this question, who am I? Let us also notice another critical element of the story of transformation as Jesus worked it and as Myrtle Fillmore worked it. Becoming who we are requires work, struggle, discipline, focus, passion. After all, we are replacing an old belief that has its roots in our early childhood emotional development with a new one rooted in our innate wisdom and intuition. 
Old beliefs and habits of mind can be stubborn things, in part because of the way our physical brains are wired to protect and reproduce them. What Jesus showed us, what Myrtle Fillmore demonstrated for us, is that there is a power greater than our old habits of mind that will always help us discover our true identity if we ask for its help and do the necessary work. And the source of that help is always at hand because it is in fact a power of the one who we really are, the one who I really am. It's always within. Who am I? Well, another of Emily Cady's foundational affirmations helps us here. I am, a, I am spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Let me put this up. I am spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt me or make me sick or afraid. For spirit is God, and God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. I manifest my real self through this body now. Let's affirm this together. I am spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt me or make me sick or afraid. For spirit is God, and God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. I manifest my real self through this body now. Now, my friends, this insight is absolutely crucial. I manifest my real self through this body now. One of our human tendencies is to fight against the dynamics of our corporeal reality. As Myrtle originally thought, we tend to see the body as a vessel of frailty, decay, pain, treachery. It is born to die, and so seems to be an enemy of the soul. In fact, in Christianity, historically, there's been a long-running narrative about the sins and, and temptations of the flesh. Denial of the body was seen by many as a path to transcendence. But surely this is a grave error as Jesus insisted not only when he affirmed that the Father and I are one, but also when he demonstrated the truth by, on that first Easter morning, returning to life wholly intact body, mind, and soul. Either there is one presence, one power, one love active in my life, or there is not. If there is, it is active in my body. For my body is, as Dr. Katie affirms, the vehicle of my divine expression right here, right now. Now, it's useless to try to find logic in this identity of body with spirit. The human mind is by its nature locked out of understanding such fundamental paradoxes. But it is our work, it is our own walk to Calvary to become willing in flesh, in faith rather, to deny the validity of our human thoughts and allow ourselves to become in the flesh a divine idea in the mind of God, which we have always been even before we were born. In today's reading from Unity's Release and Renew Lenten Practice Booklet, we read this. When we allow ourselves to live and move from the wellspring of eternal creativity and life, higher laws avail themselves to us, and we can use them as if we are magicians. It is so simple to create from this place that it's surprising and even a little unsettling. Our hardest work can be to stay out of the way and not interfere with the flow of grace and ease. Can life really be this easy? You bet it can, and it should be. It is time to create such a powerful vision for yourself that you will never be pushed by pain again. It is time to ignite your passion the fire in your belly that cannot be ignored or extinguished. I'm not talking about a burning desire to conquer the world, but an inner fire to express God and to see God. It is a fire so dedicated to being used for the glory of oneness that you are transformed. And in this transformation, people are healed in your presence. From this fire within, 
all that is created through you and drawn to you blesses you and everyone. So who am I? Let us affirm with Dr. Katie, I am spirit, perfect, whole, harmonious. God works with me to will and do whatsoever he wishes me to do, and he cannot fail. And as he cannot fail, so too I cannot fail. So let us walk today with Jesus toward our own Easter, our own letting go and letting God. And as we are entirely the eachness of God, we cannot fail. And knowing this in our bones, we cannot help but be seized by joy, for we are infinitely beloved of our Father, Mother, God. And so rejoice and rejoice. Let the sun in you shine. Give praise and thanksgiving for love that's divine. And so let's close by singing these words in our powerful hymn, acknowledging our oneness with God. We praise thee, O God. It's in Wings of Song number eight. We praise thee, O God. Gordon? So who am I? I am spirit, perfect, whole, harmonious. God works with me to will and do whatsoever he wishes me to do, and he cannot fail. And as God cannot fail, I cannot fail. And for this glorious truth, as we prepare to celebrate Easter, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs>